Welcome to British Biomedicine Institute. Today, I, Dr. Pramod Khatri, is going to represent a simple topic, cardiovascular system, blood vessels, and hemodynamics. So, the uh, structure and the functions of blood vessels are, basically, there are five main types, artery, which carry blood away from the heart, arterioles, capillaries, they are the site of exchange, venules, and vein, they carry blood to the heart. So the basic structure here is there are three layers or tunics like uh, first one is tunic interna that is it basically it is intima tunic media and tunic externa the modification account for five types of blood vessels and their structural and functional differences so this is a diagram of a vein where tunica interna tunica media and tunica externa is available or is visible now comes the structure tunica interna or we can say intima these are the internal lining of indirect contact with blood endothelium continues to endocardial lining of the heart active they play an active role in vessel related activities whereas tunica media is a muscular and connective tissue layer the greatest variation among vessel types the smooth muscles regulate the diameter of the lumen whereas tunica externa is the is elastic and collagen fiber and it derives from vessa vesorum it helps in anchoring vessels to surrounding tissue arteries basically they have three layer of typical blood vessels they have thick muscular to elastic tunica media they have high they are highly complex they have high complex their wall can scratch and expand in response to pressure without tearing and they also have vasoconstrictions they decrease in lumen diameter whereas vasodilations can increase lumen diameter the elastic arteries are the largest arteries and they have largest diameter but wall are relatively thin their function is to pressure reservoir they help propel blood forward while ventricle are relaxing they also known as conducting arteries uh, conduct blood to medium size arteries now comes the art, uh, muscular arteries tunica media contains uh, more smooth muscles and fewer elastic fibers than elastic arteries the wall is relatively thick they are capable of great vasoconstriction or vasodilation to adjust rate of blood flow and they are also called as distributing arteries and next is at anastomosis Basically, there is a union of branches of two or more arteries supplying the same body region. And they can also provide alternative route like your collateral circulation. Now comes arterioles. They are abundant microscopic vessels. And meta-arterioles has pre-capillary uh, pre spinster which monitor blood flow into capillaries. Sympathetic innervation or local chemical mediators can alter diameter and thus blood flow and resistance can be produced resistant vessels they resist in a position in the blood flow vasoconstrictions can raise blood pressure now comes capillaries capillaries are the smallest blood vessels which connect arterial overflow and venous return microcirculations flow from meta arterioles through capillaries and into post capillary venules there can be an exchange of vessels like your primary function is exchange between blood and interstitial fluids lack tunica media and they also uh, tunica externa the substance passes through just one layer of endothelial cells and basement membrane and there can also be capillary bed which arise from a single meta arterioles like vasomotion 
these are intermittent contraction and relaxation and through fear channel which can bypass capillary bed so this is a diagram of your artery and capillaries and venules where your capillaries capillary bed macular venules arterioles meta arterioles they are clearly visible so there are basically three types of capillaries uh, continuous like your endothelial cells membrane from continuous tube second one is your fenestrated they have fenestration or pores and third one is sinusoid they are wider and more windy and they have usually large pore or fenestration the portal veins the blood passes through second capillary bed hepatic and second uh, hepatic and hypophysial venules are basically thin wall then arterial counterpart post capillary venules are the smallest venule from a uh, part of microcircularity exchange unit with capillaries uh, muscular venules have a thicker wall with one to two layer of smooth muscles now comes veins so veins are the structural chains not as distinct as in arteries in general very thin walls in relation to total diameter and basically there are three uh, layers first one is your tunica interna which is thinner than arteries tunica interna thinner with little smooth muscles and tunica external is the thickest layer they are not designed to withstand high pressure and valves like for they, they can fold on tunica in for interna forming cusp and they can aid in venous return by preventing backflow so this is a diagram of your venous valves where cusp of well are are visible in the longitudinal cut so now comes blood distribution it is the largest portion of blood at rest is in systemic veins and venules and they can help as a blood reservoir veno constriction constrictions they can reduce volume of blood in reservoir and allow greater blood volume to flow whenever required or whenever needed capillary exchange it is basically the movement of substance between blood and interstitial fluid and there are three main basic methods first one is your diffusion second is your transcytosis and third one is your bulk flow diffusion this is the most important method substances move down their concentration gradient uh, oxygen and nutrients from the blood to interstitial fluid to body cells yeah carbon dioxide and waste can move from body cells to interstitial fluid to the blood they can also cross capillary wall through intracellular cleft fenestration or through endothelial cells this is the most important uh, most of the plasma proteins they cannot cross it except in sinusoids where proteins and blood cells they can leave and blood there is also a blood brain barrier where tight junctions they can limit diffusion process now comes transcytosis basically it is uh, the small quantity of materials substances in blood plasma become enclosed with pinocytosis vessels that enter endothelial cells by endocytosis and leave by exocytosis importantly mainly for large lipid insoluble molecules that cannot cross capillary wall any other way now comes bulk flow basically it is a passive process in which large number of ions molecules or particles in a fluid move together in the same direction it is basically based on pressure gradient diffusion is more important for solute exchange bulk flow more uh, is uh, 
bone flow more important for regulations for relative volumes of blood and interstitial fluid filtration uh, will be carried out between capillaries into interstitial fluid and reabsorption will be from interstitial fluid to capillaries now comes nfp net filtration pressure is balanced to two pressures so there are two pressures which can promote filtration like your bhp blood hydrostatic pressure which is being generated by pumping action of the heart it can fall over capillary bed from 35 to 16 mm hg and ifop which is interstitial fluid osmotic pressure and it it is usually between or near to 1 mm hg so two pressures they can promote reabsorption like bcop your blood collide osmotic pressures they can promote reabsorption due to presence of blood plasma protein to large to cross wall and the average pressure is 35 36 mm hg and if hp is basically interstitial fluid hydrostatic pressure they can cross to 0 mm hg now comes the sterling law it is nearly as much as reabsorbed as filtered and at the arterial end net outward pressure of 10 mm hg and fluid leave capillary with the help of filtration at the venous end the fluid moves in with the help of reabsorption due to 9 mm hg on average about 85 percent of fluid is filtered in reabsorbed and excess enter lymphatic capillaries about 3 liter per day to be eventually returned to the blood now comes the hemodynamics the factors there are various factors which can affect blood flow like volume of uh, blood flow is basically volume of blood that flow through any of the tissue in a given period of time in ml per minute the total blood flow is cardiac output co the volume of blood that circulate through systematic or pulmonary blood vessels every minute so cardiac output is equal to heart rate multiplied by stroke volume the distribution of cardiac output entirely depends upon the pressure difference that derive blood through tissue the flow from higher to lower pressure and the resistance to blood flow in specific blood vessels where there is a high resistance means small well blood will flow now comes the blood pressure which is basically a, a systolic blood pressure or diastolic blood pressure i hope you are aware so basically there will be contraction of ventricles which generate blood pressure and systolic blood pressure is the highest pressure which has been attained in arteries during systole and diastolic pressure is the lowest arterial pressure which occurs during diastole the pressure fall progressively with distance from left ventricles blood pressure also depend on total volume of the blood Ves uh, vascular resistance a position of blood flow due to friction between blood and walls of blood vessels it entirely depends upon the size of the lumen where there will be a vasoconstriction male lumen smaller means meaning greater resistance blood viscosity the ratio of cbc of rbc to plasma and protein concentration higher viscosity means higher resistance total blood vessel length are directly resistant and they are proportional to length of vessels like 400 miles of additional blood vessels for each 2.2 lb of fat
venous return the volume of blood flowing back to heart from the systemic veins it can occur due to pressure which is been generated by constriction of left ventricles the small pressure differ from venules like 16 mm hg to right ventricles 0 mm hg is sufficient skeleton muscle pump so basically there are two mechanisms it can be either through a skeleton muscle pump or through respiratory pump in skeleton muscle pump it can milk blood in one direction due to valve and in respiratory pump it can be due to pressure changes in thoracic and abdominal cavity so this is a diagram of your proximal valves and distal valves through which blood will be flowing so this is a again a diagram which is uh, distinguishing the cardiac output versus svr increased systemic vascular resistance which can lead to formation of map increased mean arterial pressure now comes the velocity of blood flow it is the speed in centimeter per second is in inversely related to cross sectional area velocity is slowest when total cross sectional area is greatest blood flow becomes slower farther from the heart and basically it is slow in capillaries it aid in exchange and the circulation time it is basically the time required for a drop of blood to pass from right atrium through pulmonary and systemic circulation and back to right atrium and basically it rest for 1 minute so this is a relationship between velocity of blood flow and cross total cross section area in different type of blood vessels like in your aorta arteries arterioles capillaries venules vein or vena cava so now comes the control of blood pressure and blood flow they are basically interconnected negative feedback system which control pressure by adjusting heart rate stroke volume systemic vascular resistance and blood volume they can also act faster than others and they entirely depends on either short term or long term now comes the role of cardiovascular basically it is it is a uh, cardiovascular center is present in medulla oblongata they also helps in heart rate and volume rate regulation they also control neural hormonal or local negative feedback system that regulate blood pressure and blood flow to specific tissue group of neurons regulate heart rate contractility of ventricles and blood vessel diameter the cardio stimulatory and cardio inhibitory centers are also available vaso motor center blood control vessel diameter they also receive input from both higher brain regions and sensory receptors so this is your cv center which will be getting input from the brain centers from pro uh, proprio receptors from vero receptors and from chemo receptors and output to effector will be from heart it can decrease the rate it can increase the rate and contractility and they can be blood vessels vasoconstrictions so there are uh, three main types of sensory receptors like proprio receptor they helps in monitoring movement of joints and muscles to provide input during physical activity vero receptors are they can help in monitoring pressure changes and scratch in blood vessel wall chemo receptors basically they monitor concentration of various chemicals in the blood the output from cv flow along neurons to autonomic nervous system 
basically they will be having uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, or we can say stimulatory they can oppose inhibitory or parasympathetic nervous nerves now comes uh, neural regulation for blood pressure they basically support negative feedback loop from two types of reflexes like first one is your baroreceptor reflexes it is basically a pressure sensitive receptor in internal cord carotid arteries and other large arteries in neck and chest carotid sinus reflex reflex help regulate blood pressure in brain aortic reflex they can regulate systemic blood pressure when blood pressure fall baroreceptors can scratch less slower rate of impulse to cv cardiovascular cardiovascular decrease parasympathetic stimulation and increase parasympathetic stimulation now comes the neural regulation of blood pressure there are basically uh, chemoreceptors which can reflex and these receptors are located close to the barometers of carotid sinus like your carotid bodies and aortic arc like your aortic bodies they can detect hypoxia when there is low oxygen level hypercapnia when there is high carbon dioxide level and acidosis when there is high x positive ions or they can send signal to cv cv increase sympathetic stimulation to arterioles and veins they produce vasoconstrictions and an increase in blood pressure the receptors also provide input to respiratory centers to adjust the breathing rate so this is a diagram of your heart versus spinal cord and information is being sent from to and fro so this is a, a diagram of your receptors role of the receptor of role of receptors and effectors being played from the heart versus your spinal cord or to the adrenal medulla now comes the hormonal regulation of blood pressure so basically r double a it is renin angiotensin aldosterone system renin is been released by the kidney when blood volume falls or blood flow decreases and an angiotensin converting enzyme ace act on substances to produce active hormone angiotensin 2 it can raise bp by vasoconstriction and secretion of aldosterone which can increase due to water reabsorption in kidney to raise blood volume and pressure epinephrine and non epinephrine they basically the adrenal medulla they release in presence to sympathetic stimulation it can increase cardiac output by increasing rate and forces to heart contraction now comes adh anti diuretic hormones or vasopressin uh, they are been produced by hypothalamus and released by posterior pituitary they respond to dehydration or decreased blood volume and they can also cause vasoconstriction which increase blood pressure ANP atrial natriuretic peptide basically they are released by the cells of atria and when there is low blood pressure which is been caused by vasodilation and they can promote loss of salt and water in urine and they can also lead to reduction in blood volume auto regulation of blood pressure it is the ability of tissue to automatically adjust its blood flow to match metabolic demand the demand of oxygen and nutrients can raise tenfold during exercise in heart and skeletal muscles also control it can also control regional blood flow in the brain 
during different mental and physical activities and basically it usually generate two types of stimuli first one is uh, physical where there will be maintenance of uh, temperature change or myogenic response and second one is vasodilating or vasoconstriction chemicals which can alter blood vessel diameter circulation basically it is the important difference between the pulmonary and systemic circulation in auto regulatory response the systemic blood vessels wall can dilate in response to low oxygen and to increase oxygen delivery the wall of pulmonary blood flow constrict under low oxygen to ensure most blood flow to better ventilated area of the lungs so this was all about the presentation i hope you have gained a lot of clinical information through this presentation please like share subscribe our youtube channel named as british biomedicine institute good luck goodbye